waiting for the recording to get started. Okay, recording is started. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Today, we are going to study on the book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostles. So even before we could start, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Uh, blessings, would you be able to lead us in prayer? Or Anita, Aradhana. Paul, can you lead us in prayer? I think there's some problem with the mic with the others. Paul, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Yes, I can hear you, ma'am. Yes, so Paul, you will lead us in prayer, please. Okay, let's humble ourselves and pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another day in our life. We thank you for this classroom. As we gather together, let your Holy Spirit come and be amidst us. Come and guide us. Come and give us wisdom and understanding mm -hmm. of the teaching of today. We dedicate the class and the pastor into your hand. We pray all this in Jesus Christ's name, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Paul. That was a wonderful prayer. Thank you. So, <clears throat> today we're going to study on the book of Acts of the Apostles. And so, I just wanted to check with our class, like, how much do we know about the Acts of the Apostles? Or what is that we know about this book? As I try to present a short presentation that I prepared, anyone in the class can unmute and answer. What is that we know about the book of the Acts of the Apostles? I hope we go through our notes even before we could come to our class. I encourage each one of you all, please go through your notes so that we would be prepared. Yes, uh, I see. Uh, message okay a chat okay from Subashi saying yes acts of the apostle is also known as acts of the holy spirit yes Subashi, thank you that would be a very good start to start the class with so i would request and encourage each of us please go through your notes even before we could come to the class so that we are well prepared and whatever has been shared discussed in the class you know we can understand it better well the book of Acts is also known as the book of the Holy Spirit. The book of Apostles is a very valuable history of the early church, which has been recorded in this book. Much of what we know about the early years of how the Christianity came into existence, we learn is from uh, this book. So without the book of Acts, it would be impossible for us to find the connection between the Gospels and the epistles in the New Testament. So this book, the book of Acts, acts like a bridge connecting the Gospels and the epistles together. So it is the outcome of the Gospel. And we see in the book of Acts, how many chapters are there? You could always refer to your Bible. Please keep your Bibles handy. About 28 chapters. Yes, there are about 28 chapters. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, give me a minute as I navigate this. Okay. So in Book of Acts, we have about 28 chapters and there are divisions in each. So the first chapter 1 to chapter 12, it focuses on the foundation of the church. And chapter 13 to chapter 28, it, it focuses on the founder of churches. So who are the founders? We have 
uh, most of the book of Acts, yes, it talks about the other apostles, but majorly on the two apostles, that is on uh, Peter and Paul. And we see in, in Acts chapter 1 to 7, uh, it talks about to the Jews. And then from chapter 8 to 12, it talks to the Samaritans and chapter 13 till 28. It talks to the Gentiles, where Paul is ministering to the Gentiles. So what do we see? The key verse, the key verse, that is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. We will study on it later, okay, which talks about the gospel spreading in different places. That is in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So we see chapter 1 to 7, we see how the gospel spread in Jerusalem. In 8 to 12, we see how the gospel spread in Judea and Samaria. And then from 13 to 28, how it reached to the utmost parts of the earth. And the time period varies. Some say about 30 years. The whole of Book of Acts covers about 30 years and some say 33 years. So again, keeping the timeline in mind, uh, it is not uh, accurate, but then it's all an approximate years that has been recorded. Well, who's the author of this book? The only Greek writer of the Bible, the physician, the professor himself, Luke. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yes, it is Dr. Luke, the author of Gospel of Luke. And then this book of Acts is the continuation from the Gospel of Luke. With that, we will move on to the next slide. Well, so the book of Acts is a bridge connecting the Gospels and the Epistles. So what do we see? It is the outcome of the Gospel. So in the Gospel, we see that Jesus is seen as you know, corn of wheat who falls on the ground and dies to himself. Can I request one of us to please turn to John chapter 12, verse 24? John chapter 12, verse 24. John, Acts chapter, ma'am, John or Acts? John chapter 12, verse 24. John chapter 12, verses 24. Yeah. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So we see the fulfillment of this scripture in the book of Acts, where it says, most assuredly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. We see self-sacrifice of the apostles. That which De Jesus demonstrated, we see the apostles follow that in their life in the book of Acts. We also see the book of Acts gives us the result of Jesus' willingness to lay down his life. Like yesterday when we studied, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, we see that, you know, when Jesus said, I am, they all fell to the ground. But then Jesus waited for them to get up, come and arrest him and take him. Jesus gave himself. Even at the cross, when we see that Jesus embrace the cross willingly and even when we meditate the seven words of jesus on the cross you see it is a it is the willingness of jesus he was so prepared even on his earthly ministry jesus focused on what the father will was and he knows the end he knew it, that he need to die for us on the cross Keeping this in mind, willingly he offered himself. When he was on the cross, he, he just said, Father, I commend my spirit into your hands. Jesus committed, he gave his spirit willingly into Father's hand. And with worship, with an act of worship, he bowed his head down and he gave himself. And also the scripture says, as per the Old Testament prophecy, that not one bone of Jesus was broken on the cross. 
usually uh, for the Romans, where when we go through the scripture, I wanted to cover this yesterday in the class, but then due to time, I could not share this. Uh, when we read about the history, the Romans usually, uh, you know, uh, it, it is a usual practice for the Romans to crucify people on the cross. But when they crucified Jesus, um, it's usually like this, you know, um, they take a wooden plank and they break the leg of the uh, of the person who has been crucified on the cross, the victim. They break the leg so that they die faster. They gasp out of breath and they die faster. And uh, when they do that, uh, as they're gasping, uh, the victim bangs his head over the wood or the, uh, the tree on which they have been crucified. And then there will be a crack on their skull. And with that, they die. But then when it came to Jesus, they never did that. By then, Jesus gave up his spirit. He surrendered. He worshipped God and he gave up his spirit willingly. So we see that Jesus embraced the cross willingly. Willingly, he laid down his life for us to bear much fruit that is brought, brought forth. We also see the conclusion in the gospel that Jesus purchased the church with his blood. So in the book of Acts, we see that the church rises to the actual existence. And in the gospel, we see that Jesus gives this famous prophecy stating, which is stated in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. I'll just give you it. I'll just say the verse. It says, I will build my church. Jesus prophesied, saying that I will build my church. So in the book of Acts, we see the fulfillment of that prophecy. And we also see in the gospel, Jesus issued the command to his followers to take the gospel to the ends of the year. That's the great commission which Jesus gave. We see that in Matthew chapter 28. And we also see in all the gospels, the great commission, take the gospel go to the utmost parts of the earth and we see that in the book of acts we get a glimpse of how the apostles responded to that through the guidance and the direction of the holy spirit now when we say that were they fearful were they scared did they go back to their own work to the business what they were into yes they were fearful they hid themselves they betrayed they started the old uh, business or work, whatever they were from. But then what happened? We see in Acts chapter 1 and 2, on the day of Pentecost, when all 120 of them, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, they were present in the upper room, when they were fearful, and what they did, they prayed. When they prayed, the tongues of fire, the Holy Spirit, descended upon each one of them the form of tongues of fire and the whole room was filled and each tongues of fire sat upon the head that's what has been recorded in the scripture and in uh, chapter 2 verse 4 it says they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and as we read that, we see how Peter ministered to 3,000 people. And at a time, 3,000 people were saved, received. The gospel started spreading. It spread much more than what was expected. We see that. So the book of, the book of Acts, okay, I will not go detail into it because in your third year, in your third year, we have... Uh, the whole subject on the book of Acts where we will be starting in detail, chapter wise in detail. So I'll just be, this is just a survey of the book so that I can complete the survey within the given time of 15 min 50 minutes. Well, the book of Acts acts as an introduction to the epistle. So it is, uh, uh, it gives us the background on what occasion for how much or what will follow them. And it also helps us to understand the epistles uh, in the historical context, as we saw in the chart before. So the book of Acts is a book of practical theology. The book of Acts 
the second point is a book of practical theology. So what do we see here? This book establishes for us the foundational truth and the principles of the church. How? In its word and in its deed. We also see the demonstration for us in living form. All of the teaching of Christ in the gospel. So in the book of Acts, we also see some things that have been birthed, such as evangelism. We see how the apostles take the word, take the gospel message and go to the utmost parts of the earth. We also see the ministry in the spirit has been birthed. Missions are birthed. Church planting, church government. We also see team ministry or the prayer life of the church, the character of a biblical Christian. And we also see the disciplining and raising up of leaders. With that, we will move on to the third point. The book of Acts is also a book of beginnings. Just like how we have Genesis in the Old Testament uh, is the book of beginnings. And it is very important to know the creation of <clears throat> the existence. In the same way, we need the book of Acts. It also acts like a book of beginning to us to know how the ministry is being birthed, how the Holy Spirit work of evangelism started. How did the apostle carry the preaching? How did they preach? How did they carry the gospel to the utmost parts of the earth? Complete new dimension of the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Spirit can minister to each of us individually. We can see the power of the Spirit move among the people. The church has been birthed. We see the first time Christianity has been called in the place of, uh, of Antioch. The worldwide evangelism has been seen here. Salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ has been preached to each and everyone by the apostles. And with that, we will move on to the fourth point. Sorry, it is not the book of beginnings. I think it is carried over. Now it's right. Thanks. <clears throat> so the book of Acts is a book of inspiration in days of restoration. So it provides us a record of an early rain outpouring of the Spirit. And we also see how God is restoring the church back, restoring the individual back. He also uh, provides us a glimpse and a glimpse where we can find the stir of faith in each one where uh, the the uh, we can see in the gospel where the same uh, apostle who were in fearful and they betrayed Jesus. But here in the acts of apostle, we see that faith in them that they are ready to die. They're ready to give their life for the sake of the gospel. There's fearlessness in them because they know what happened. They know that Jesus is alive. He is the true son of God. And now they're able to connect the dots like whatever Jesus taught them, what Jesus taught them when he was on the earthly ministry of which the disciples did not understand when Jesus was with them. But now they're able to recollect, they're able to recollect and understand how because they have the Holy Spirit, the comforter of whom Jesus promised in John chapter 14, 16. We read yesterday that I will send a comforter who will abide with you. Now, this comforter, Holy Spirit, does not only abide with us or guide us, but he also teaches us. He also gives us the understanding. He also reminds us of the situation, the words that Jesus shared with them. We see that happening with the apostles. They're able to understand the teaching of Jesus. And now they are able to share that good news with with boldness and with power with everyone around. With that, we will move on to the next point. That is the book of Acts is the only unfinished book in the New Testament. How do we say that? It is, this is the only book that has no amen in it. 
in the end when you read acts 28 verse 30 31 can i request one of us to please read 30 31 Acts chapter 28 verses 31. 30 Hold, and 31, sorry. 30 and 31. Yes. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. Boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, my version says that preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. It's a continuation. There is no amen in the end. It continues to the episodes. It continues with preaching the kingdom of God. And our lives are to help complete the book throughout the ages. It just didn't continue with the apostles to share the good news, to carry the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. But then it is also giving us the commission. Now it's your turn. You need to take the pattern. You need to share the gospel to the world that you are impacting. So with that, have we any of us thought at any time why was this book titled as Acts of the Apostles and not uh, with a different title? Or it can be Acts of the Holy Spirit or Acts of the Believers or Acts of Paul and Peter because uh, mainly it has been written about them. Or Acts of Luke or because Luke is the author, it can also be named after the author. Why not? Have anyone thought or anyone would like to answer this? Because it is still continuing. Yes, it's still continuing. This, this title, the Acts of the Apostle, although many would have, many scholars or would have suggested a different title, but this one suits, this one goes ahead. I think the Holy Spirit inspired the leaders back then with this name, Acts of the Apostles. It's not about just one person. It's about each one. And it is also about us. We need to carry that baton. We need to carry the gospel. I see someone raised hand or it was a chat. I'm not able to see because the presentation is on. Did anyone raise your hand? Okay. Yes, yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. I think it is called uh, the Acts of Apostle because it, in this dispensation of the Holy Spirit that we are in, it puts you, you, me, and all the, my brethren in the class into the picture that we are still supposed to continue doing the acts uh, in to, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. Brother Lubega, thank you so much for sharing. You're right. Yes, the story needs to continue. It needs to continue through us. We need to carry the word and reach the world. So, and also throughout the book, we see the key word called apostle about 30 times. It's used about 30 times. And uh, so who is the author, as we already shared, who is the author of this book? Luke. Luke was the author. And this book was written in 60 to 62 AD. And we also see that Paul was still in the prison. And before his trial, this book was written. And Acts covers approximately about... 33 years from the ascension of Jesus to the time when Paul had been in prison in Rome for two years. And with that, we will move on to the purpose of this book. What was the purpose for which this book was written? Anyone from the class? 
to reveal how pra- god practically works through his people yes yes correct so there may be many possible reasons uh, we can suggest that why this book of acts was written but then maybe one thing what i also feel is to preserve the historical records of the origin of the early church so luke being an well educated man is concerned about the things that has been birthing in the church and all these needs to be recorded so that it can reach the future generation so that's the main reason of why the apostles started writing they started recording of all that has been happening yes the other is the inspiration of the holy spirit as well yes with the help and the guidance of the holy spirit but they started writing they started recording the things that was happening and it all has the fact they, there's a witness there it has been written by the eye witness of the people and the historical events that has been recorded so it's all true and uh, this book also demonstrates the continued work of christ through the ministry of the holy spirit which we see in acts chapter 1 verse 1 itself and we also see uh, how the church was built how christ built the church through his people it just then end after the death of jesus everything was not over it was only then the church was birthed it also provides us a defense to christianity in time and we also see the persecution how the apostles were persecuted but then that did not stop it moved on it carried on that fire that was there in the apostles it's the same fire that is there in each one of us who have jesus as the lord and savior within us burning within us and that is the one of the reason why each of us are here part of a college studying the word to know more about him why because there is a fire that is unquenchable it has made each one of us to take a step to know more why to do much more for the lord who have chosen us and being aware of everything around us it's not going to be easy of sharing the gospel to others knowing everything there is a strength within us there is a boldness there's a confidence despite our weakness we are able to step into what the lord wants us to do because knowing that the lord who were with the apostles who strengthened them in their weakness the same god can do much more things in and through us when we surrender ourselves to him with that we also see it uh, this book also gives us a defense and to pre- uh, present paul's trial to explain his arrest and the charges that were against him and we see how he defended himself with uh, many leaders and how he argued defended his case with them and how we we see how the holy spirit were leading them from place to place we also see the different missionary journeys that paul took and how the holy spirit ministered to them how he spoke to them in uh, through words vision through people through prayer through the leaders we see how the holy spirit led in the same way the holy spirit is with us and he will lead us so with that we will move on to the key verse can i request one of us to please turn to acts chapter 1 verse 8 please and read I've also presented Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says I'm reading in the King James version New yes. King James version okay. but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in and Samaria and to the end of the world of the earth Amen 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 Thank you 
I just put this from the chart that we viewed before. We see, as per this verse, you shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit that has come upon you, and you shall be a witness where? In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It means what? Is it particularly only for Jerusalem? No, we can translate it to us. Yes, in the book of Acts, it shows literally how the gospel spread from a small town, from Jerusalem city to Judea, to Samaria, and then to the other parts of the earth. So we see the scriptures. I see that in Acts 8, we see in Jerusalem how the gospel ministered to the people in Jerusalem. And then in Acts chapter 2, and then 8, 10, 11, 19, uh, then 15, we see how it spread to Judea. And in Acts chapter 8 to 10, it reached Samaria through Philip. And then to the utmost parts of the earth through Paul. He carried uh, the gospel and he went on the missionary journey along with Barnabas and then with Silas. So when we read the book of Acts, we see the demonstration of this verse. Now today, how we can apply it in our life. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, when we are filled, we become his witness. And we start carrying this gospel and ministering to our people. In our, own, in our own home, in our church, and then in our city, then in other states, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth, to the nation and to the nations. And I've listed some of the keys to the kingdom that operate in the book of Acts. The very, uh, I, I've just listed four keys, there may be many, but then, what I learned from this book, I've recorded here for us to learn and understand. So the four keys of the kingdom in the book of Acts is the first one, the word of God, which is this word of the spirit. So we see in the book of Acts, we see the apostles solely carried the word of God and shared it in faith and life to the to, the, to all the people who were willing to hear the gospel. They carried it with them. So the word of God was the central message in their teaching and preaching, wherever they went. And also we see that the apostles just did not preach with just the word, but they also demonstrated the power of God. It was just not with the word of preaching, but then they also demonstrated with the power of God. So when they were taught, uh, they taught the word with exhortation, uh, they taught the word of salvation, and they also demonstrated the grace, the good news of the Lord. And they also taught the truth which is there in the word. But that we also see the word of God was a sword of the spirit that they wielded skillfully. They spoke boldly with confidence. They taught the word to everyone. They also allowed them. They encouraged them to share this good news with everyone. Though there were a lot of persecution and they were having these underground churches, but then they encouraged each one to carry the word to the other. So there were no uh, New Testament book or the Bible that like what we have, but then they passed on the word just by the word of mouth. They carried the gospel through the word of mouth. And it spread much more than what it is today with all the technologies. We also see that the word of God uh, affected, it, it fetched great result. It demonstrated power because the Holy Spirit was present and the Holy Spirit moved among them powerfully. We also see uh, the second point, we see the Holy Spirit. The church cannot function or fulfill without the Great Commission. How? We need to have the relationship with the Holy Spirit to carry the word. We see the apostles having a great relationship with the Holy Spirit. They seeked God for everything. For every decision they make, they seek. 
they sensed the power of the Holy Spirit with them. They felt the awareness of his presence with them, which motivated them, which empowered them. And with that, uh, under that authority, they ministered to people and they saw the signs, wonders and miracles happen. We see people were healed with the shadow of the apostles. We see just by touching uh, the kerchief, the kerchief were prayed and passed over. We see the healing and deliverance been happening. How the move of the Holy Spirit was so powerful then. We see the ninefold role of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts as the commander in chief the inspire of the prophecy, we also see the fulfillment of the prophecies or the promise of the Father, the gift of God or the comforter of the church. We also see him as the confirmer of the word. And he was also the bringer of joy. And uh, the scripture also says that the rain from heaven and we also see how the apostles had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We see in Acts chapter 1 verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So we see that they were empowered or baptized with the Holy Spirit. And that's why they could do what they could do. We also see the prompting of the Holy Spirit. They see uh, the appointing of the leaders through the Holy Spirit. And we also see how uh, Paul and Barnabas were separated on different work by the Spirit. They were led and guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. We see how Philip was transported on the eunuch through the, uh, to the eunuch on the chariot, transported by the Spirit. We also see in Acts chapter 2 verse 4, we just read, it says, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. We also see in Acts chapter 5 verse 32, we see that they were co-witnesses of the Spirit. We see how the Holy Spirit moved. It partnered with the apostles and how it moved. With that, we will move on to the third point, the name of Jesus, the authority of the believer. The apostles were totally, totally dependent on the name of the Lord to see the result and the empowerment of their ministry. His name was everything for them. His name was equal to the person, Jesus, who was alive with them. His name gave them the authority. And that's how his name, that we need his name. That's how we pray in the name of Jesus. The book of Acts, we see the name, the very name of the Lord bringing healing, deliverance, or forgiveness of sins, or uh, healing the sick, delivering, delivering them. We see the signs, wonders, and miracles happen in the name of Jesus. So what we see from this book is we see the apostles completely rely on the very name of the Lord. So they had faith on the name of Jesus. So what they did, they started teaching and preaching on the name of Jesus. They magnified this name. They bore the name of Jesus. They suffered for that name and they were willing to die for his name's sake. We also see with the last point is <clears throat> the prayer was the pipeline of the spirit. We see the apostles were all together. They were binded together is only with the prayer. I remember someone has once said that you can measure your dependence on God by the amount of time that you spend in prayer. I repeat it. We can measure the dependence on God by the amount of time that we spend in prayer. So we need to be dependent on God. and We need to pray. We see Jesus himself took time and prayed in the Gospels. And here in the book of Apostles, we see how Apostles prayed. They prayed at 
any time, at any occasion, they were fearful, they prayed, they saw signs, wonders, miracles happen, they prayed. When Peter was arrested, they prayed. Their prayer was answered. Paul was stoned to death in uh, Acts 21. We see Paul was stoned to death. Those days, uh, uh, they were the Jews and Romans were like, the Jews were uh, very good in stoning. So they know if they stoned somebody, then they knew that, okay, this person is dead. So assuming that, you know, they stoned Paul, they thought that he's dead. They dragged him to the outside of the city and they left him there. And here we see the apostles gather around him and they, yes, the scripture does not say that they prayed, but then we know what they would have done. So the scripture says, the very next verse says, Paul got up along with Barnabas, he went to the next city. Look at the strength. Somebody who was stoned to death in the night. He gets up next day, he carries the work of the gospel. Maybe, as Paul said in his epistles, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Maybe he thought, okay, now I'm alive, so now I need to carry the gospel and do what God has asked me to do for him. Every minute counted. For him, every minute counted. For the, all the apostles, every minute counted. We also see Stephen being stoned to death. What was his reaction? How did he respond to that very act? We see him imitating Jesus. Jesus said what he said on the cross. We see even Stephen say when he was stoned, forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they are doing. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. People be shocked. What kind of man is this? Yes, who was touched in that very act? We see Paul. Paul, who became a greater, uh, great, uh, a great apostle, who wrote one third of the one third of the New Testament, being touched by the very act of Stephen being martyred there. So that's the move of the Holy Spirit that we see. That's the power when we pray. When we pray, things change. It may be as big as a mountain, but then God says, when you pray, I work. The Spirit moves when we pray. The very verse, the Genesis chapter 1, we see in the beginning, what happened? Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Let me turn. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. That means what? The Spirit of God was present, but it could not do anything unless and until a word was released. Unless and until a word was released. So what happened in verse 3? We see, then God said, let there be light. The word was released. How positive. Though God saw darkness, it was void, it was uneven, darkness was covered, but then God spoke something of what he wanted to see. He wanted to see the light and he said, let there be light. The Holy Spirit was present there, started moving, bringing things into action. He created the light. The light came into existence. The very next verse says, God saw the light, that it was good. The same way today, the Holy Spirit is present with us. The Holy Spirit is around us, is within us, is moving around us. The minute we pray, we release that word. Isaiah 55, 11 says that none of our word will return to us void. But it shall bring forth the fruit that it was sent forth for. There's power. We see in Acts chapter 3 verse 1, they prayed on a regular basis. 
they met together and they prayed they prayed in all occasion throughout the acts we see they prayed in different occasion to select a leader setting up ministries ordaining elders departing from one to the other they prayed for the people they prayed over the church they prayed over the friends they prayed over the people who tried to help them they prayed over them who persecuted them they prayed they also prayed for the physical needs something like or the special needs i can say something like pray for boldness pray to receive the holy spirit they prayed uh, to raise the dead many 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 just they didn't just only pray for healing and deliverance they prayed even for the personal needs and as they believed as they prayed god moved and god answered their prayer so we see the church in the new testament was born in prayer so what do we take away from this book from today's class open to all what is our learning from this book can i share something yes yes please go ahead yes i think one of the thing i learned is like um, the apostles accepted the great commission and uh, with the promise and fulfillment of the power they received upon the uh, the advent of the holy spirit they carried out the commission of carrying on the, the word of god up to today this word has reached us thank god for that amen yes thank you thank you brother for sharing that very important anyone else would like to add Yes, please go ahead, Brother Lubega. Uh, what I've learned is what I learned from the Book of Acts is uh, to show it helps me in apologetics, whereby it shows that my faith is gra gr grounded. It doesn't just come from from hearsays, just like other religions, for for like uh, the Muslims. Who whenever the scripture would always change whenever the the prophet is emotions and things would change. So this one shows actually that our faith is grounded. So it is very important as far as my apologetics is concerned. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to add to what Brother Lubega shared? Yeah, I just um, yes. can I go ahead? Yeah. Yes, yes, Nikki. So I just we we know this very practically that you know we depend on the Holy Spirit, but I think when you look at the Book of Acts, it's amazing how much they really depended on prayer and just dependent on the Lord and their leading. Which uh, personally, also I feel like sometimes. you try to use your mind a lot when it comes to ministry but when you go back to all these principles that they followed no matter how uh, i mean the amazing things they did they always went back to god and they were led by the holy spirit in a beautiful way so i really admire that and want to walk like that so amen amen thank you thank you nikki for that take away yes uh, just to add to what nikki said yes prayer was very important we see about uh, at least 17 chapters out of 28 have a reference to prayer so that much of importance when the apostles gave to prayer so they believed in the power of prayer and they began and they continued and also it ended all their work with a word of prayer so prayer was a vital key for the apostles and that's what we read in this book of acts and that should be our take away today that prayer should become our life our lifestyle for anything and everything we need to ask god in prayer anyone else would like to add joy john jefina said please please feel free to add your take away from the book of acts um one point which you mentioned in the class especially regarding prayer is the uh the amount of time you spend in prayer 
it reveals the depth of your uh, you know the the work that we do or the uh, relationship with jesus it's quite uh, a good reminder for even for me personally and thank you for sharing yeah. that yeah thank you thank you john jeffina would you like to add yes sir please go ahead Mom, when we were uh, reading and talking about the acts, I just got reminded of one word. I one day I was listening to Pastor T G T D Jakes, mm -hmm. who was telling like you, as you said, it is the book of the beginning. Mm -hmm. So as we say in from Genesis to John, there mm -hmm. were we can divide it to the two eras. First, the era of the Father, then the era of the, Jesus, the Son. Then mm -hmm. after that. The New Testament should start directly from the Acts because we can see it is. We can see that the era of Holy Spirit is being started. Mm -hmm. Jesus have went back to his father. Mm -hmm. Now the Great Commission, which is be passed on to us now in whole in this we see like from Acts the work which was assigned to the apostles is being started, mm -hmm. and and it is this book. In this book and rest of the till Revelation from Acts to Revelation, we see their obedience, and this obedience we have. This is obedience is being passed on to us, and we have to fulfill the Great Commission future. Yes, yes. So when we talk about the Old Testament, yes, we see that God, the Father, was speaking to His people, and in the New Testament, we see God, the Son, speaking to each of us to His people. Yes, thank you, thank you, Sid. Okay, as the time is up, we also uh, see that um, as we all are here, we all are serving in different ministries in different area, different place. I would like to encourage each one, no matter how big, uh, how small things that you're serving in. It may be uh, arranging chairs or serving tables, or it can be any area that we are part of service in the church let us do it wholeheartedly willingly because that's what the apostles did even for them to serve even for them to appoint someone to serve the food the criteria in the book of acts they searched someone to be filled in the holy spirit they selected those people to serve the food in the church so what we learn from this is no work no work that uh, no task whatever we try to do in the church is small or great everything is same every act god looks at our heart with what art our attitude we are serving and this is something that we believe at all people's churches we all are on the same level ground we are all on the same level ground you may be a day old in the Lord or you may be very matured in the Lord, no matter how old, how many years you are in the ministry or how much knowledge you have gained. That doesn't matter. But we are all on the same level ground when we come to Christ, when we come to serve Him. So whatever area you're serving, do not take it light. Serve with your whole heart and be a witness faithfully and leave the result to God. Because God says, when you humble yourself under my hand, I will lift you up in due time. In the right season, God will take you to a different heights as what your heart desires. Every area we are learning. We are learning. There is no place in the church that we we serve is something that we do not learn. Every area, God will teach us something. And our learning is different. Uh, uh, God teaches to each one in the way that they can understand. Okay, so he teaches each one differently in the way that they can understand. He speaks to them in the way they can understand. So with that, we will end this book, the book of Acts. And... Yes, we can dismiss with a word of prayer. Can I request one of you all to please pray and dismiss us? I leave some of the highlights here from whatever we have discussed today in the class. Yes, please.
Zeli, would you like to pray? Yes. Thank you, Father, for this amazing session. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through your daughter, uh, Pastor Dina. Thank you so much, Lord, for wonderful truth which we have learned this session, Lord God. Holy Spirit, as we learn about the book of Acts, Lord, continue to minister to each one of our hearts that, Lord, we will be full of your Holy Spirit. And, Lord, that we will continue to be persistent in prayers, Lord God, and help us to apply whatever truth that we have learned in the session in our life, Father God. As we disperse from this place, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide us, lead us through this. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zeli. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all next week. And I would encourage you all to please be part of the mentoring hour on Thursdays, 8 to 9, and the supernatural hour on Fridays, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. IST Indian time. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.